Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very interesting little pen slash piece of art slash something or another. Um, and that is this guy, the Namisu Nova Titanium. Um, thank you very much, first off, to my buddy Anthony for sending this little guy along. Um, it's a pen that actually hadn't been on my radar at all, but it is really neat now that I've had a chance to take a look at it, so that's good. Um, first off, we'll do a size comparison, though, right here. This is the pen next to a uh, Big Click Stick, so you can see this is actually a pretty beefy little pen. Um, well, not all that little. A little thicker in the middle and whatnot. Right here it is next to a Pilot G2, uh... Yeah, Pilot G2. Uh, right here is a Keras Customs Fountain K. And so you can see here it's a little bit longer, a little tiny bit thicker. And then um, this little guy is an Urban Survival Gear uh, tie scribe bolt, which is another interesting, it's a gel sort of pen, but still um, another interesting little size comparison. So uh, there you go. Let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting little fountain pen right here. Okay, so on the good side, first off, I gotta say, I do very much love the fact that they included with this pen a pocket slip. Um, this doesn't seem like a big deal, but given that this pen has no clip, that's a very, very important sort of detail here. And the slip itself is nice. It's leather of some variety or another. It has the name of the company on there. Can't argue with it. It fits the pen just beautifully. So that's the first good thing. Next thing, ergonomically speaking, this pen is great. But I mean that in a few different ways. The size and the overall thickness of it is very, very nice. The, the heft of it feels great. And honestly, um, just the balance. I mean, overall, this this just this is a pleasure to have in my hand. And it's as a result, it's also a bit of a pleasure to write with. I mean, I can absolutely... Here we go. Hello, world. Ah. We'll talk about that in a bit here. But anyways, um, it's a very, very nice knife. Ah, uh, knife. Sorry, I reviewed a lot of knives. A very, very nice pen in that way and in the hand. Next little detail here that brought me a lot of joy is take a look at the threading right here. Um, this point of threading can often be an ergonomic issue because you get these little round, uh, little sharp jaggies. Uh, the threads are actually sort of triangular. You can see those right at the top there, and that means that as you put your fingers across this, it really digs in. It feels like there's some kind of grab it tooth there, for lack of a better term. Whereas on this guy here, we can see that the threads are actually, there's kind of a squared off nature to the threads, with maybe a little chamfer in there. And what that basically means is that although these threads hold the cap on just beautifully, you don't really feel them as you run your fingers over them. And that's a nice, nice little detail, especially given that your thumb is right on top of those threads. Not having something that's sharp and grabby there is a smart approach, and it's something that brings me joy. So I, I appreciate very much that they did those threads in that way. Um, another thing, and actually you'll see that they did not do the interior threads in that way, which means this was really a super conscious decision that they made. And I respect the heck out of it. So that's good. Um, we're taking the inside uh, out of the pen here. And uh, we can see here that this takes a standard cartridge converter, which it comes with. Or you can use any international cartridge, long or short, which gives you a lot of versatility, which I appreciate very much. So that's good. And then finally, on the good side, I got to say, this uh, pen has an incredible feeling of solidity, especially when capped. When capped, this feels like a single metal object. That's not something that's actually important for writing, but it is something aesthetically speaking that I, I just enjoy. I appreciate the strength, the solidity of this pen. It, it just, it feels pretty great. And so I appreciate that very much. And that's to me what's good here is that it's super solid feeling when it's capped. You get lots of ink options with any international cartridge or a converter. Screw threading is very nicely done. Feels great in the hand. Very nice to write with. Great balance. And it comes with a nice slip case. Um, let's talk about what's really great about this pen. To me, what's absolutely great about this pen is the fact that it is a beautiful object. It has just great proportions. This is just, I don't know, I love the look of this object here. I, I mean, and it's the little details. Not only the subtle contouring throughout the body of it, but also look at the edges here. You have on the top and the bottom these very nice chamfered tips. Uh, well, not chamfered, they're kind of conical, rounded off with a cone. I don't know what the term is. I'm not a, a brilliant man here, but whatever they are, they're very, very attractive. And this, uh, this pen on the whole is just really, really super attractive. And then the size of the nib in there too, just lends this guy a feeling of 
odd that you don't find all that often in the pen world. I mean, so often it's like, yeah, it looks like a pen. But this is really a sculpture that happens to write, and I appreciate that very much. The fact that it's made out of titanium, too, gives it a very nice, luxurious feel, as does the heft. I mean, seriously, in terms of raw aesthetics, there is not a damn thing wrong with this pen. It is a really, really pretty and really, really nicely sculpted piece of art. Uh, let's talk about what's bad here. Okay, so on the bad side, first off, the finish is a little bit delicate on here. I mean, this is a very, very, I mean, there is a texture to it. If we kind of zoom in closely here, we can see that there is very, very much sort of a, a subtle brushing to it. And, uh, you know, that it looks great, but the problem is it also takes scratches very nicely. You can see already, and I got this brand new from the factory, but there is already these little scratches around the ring here, and we'll talk about those in a little bit here. But you can tell that this pen is going to not take damage very well. It's meant to be an artistic piece, and if you treat it like a, well, I don't know, you knock it around, you may have some issues with that. Titanium is not the most scratch-resistant material ever. Next thing, um, I gotta say, the uh, the nib on this guy is not super impressive to me. This is using a company uh, called Bach, uh, they're, they're nibs, and Bach sells um, not only private label nibs to a lot of people, but they also sell, uh, they just sell them as, as nibs. And unfortunately, this has some of the, the stereotypical Bach issues, where, you know, most of the time it's okay, but you will get hard starts. Uh, you will get areas and angles where it just, it doesn't work all that well. There we go, huh? No. And periodically you lose feet. Oftentimes, Bach has issues with what's called a baby's bottoming, where the, 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 the nib is a little bit over-polished, and so, you know, this is looking at the nib straight on here, and so there's ink down in this little area, but the paper is down here, and so you really need to spread it open in order for the ink to ever hit paper. Whatever, it's not a huge, huge deal, but I gotta say, in terms of writing, although this is absolutely fine to write with, you do get those hard starts that you don't tend to get on some other brands, so I'm not really often a fan of Bach nibs, and unfortunately, I think they got bit again. Particularly on a $100 pen, that's that's getting a little bit, I don't know. Hopefully, Namisu can quality control those and get the, the, the really bad ones out of the mix, but that scares me a little bit. Next thing, um, on the bad side, actually, the last thing on the bad side is that there is no clip at all on this pen. Um, It comes with the leather slip, which I showed you, which really does help. The thing is, there is no way to, you know, if you're wearing a shirt pocket sort of thing, there's no way to clip this in there, so it's just going to be bouncing around in your pocket all day, or if you throw it in one of your pants pockets, along with anything else, it's just going to be scratching itself up. Uh, you know, at the very least, it might scratch up this top portion that's not being covered by the sheath. Whatever it is, I'm not a huge fan of the lack of clip there. I totally get that the aesthetic is probably better served by not having a clip, but man, does it make it tougher, because this pen was very happy to roll anywhere and everywhere. If your meeting table at work isn't precisely level, guess what? Your pen's going to be taking a magical journey every five seconds. Um, it's kind of, unfortunately, the lack of clip on this guy, coupled with the, the scratchy finish and the, the lack of anything to stop it from rolling, makes it sort of a pen that you want to want to use at one desk and leave it there. It's not a great pen to just throw in your, your pocket and go around for the day. So um, at the very least for me, that that's what's bad here is that there is no clip here and that causes some serious concessions. The uh, finish is a little bit delicate on this guy. You can already see a little bit of scratching here and there and I've been pretty careful and I've had some mixed experiences with Bach nibs and unfortunately this is no exception. There are some hard starts and whatnot that I would really like to not be seeing here. But uh, let's talk about what's uglier about this little guy, because the rest of it's pretty damn pretty. Look, to me, the ugly thing here is a continuation of the fact that there's no clip, but that's that this cap, well, actually two issues, but this cap does not want to stay put. Um, if you put this down on a table, particularly one that isn't perfectly level, and given I'm more sensitive to this than most with a non-level uh, conference table at work, this is just going to roll, and it's going to keep rolling and rolling, 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 and, you know, sooner or later it might start to roll uphill and stop itself naturally, but still, it's a little hard to control. You can set it down standing, but the center of gravity ain't so stellar, so whatever. But this basically means that uh, in a lot of situations, you're going to want to post the cap. You're going to want to put that on the back there. The problem is uh, that when you do that, unfortunately, you can see that it scratches up the barrel of the pen a little bit. You can see the little scratch marks right here. See? Just scrolling by here. And I've tried very hard. I noticed that the first time I posted the damn cap, and it's like, okay... I better not do that again. But still, that's really, really ugly. Um, and I get why it happens. I mean, sure, they're shopping threads and it's on the textured titanium. 
But no, that, that's just not great because it puts you in a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. If you don't post the cap, you got a cap that's rolling off everywhere. But if you post the cap, you're going to scratch up your nice little piece of art here. They say on their website that the pen is not meant for a posted cap, and that, that's great. But if that's the case, then fix the damn cap so it doesn't roll everywhere. Or better still, fix the pen so that you can... Pe you know, post the cap without scratching it up. They're saying that the cap is not meant for posting is kind of just trying to cover up a design flaw, and I don't love that. Um, functionally speaking, this cap needs to either be able to post or needs to stay put. But whatever it is, that's a little bit ugly. I, I, I don't like the fact that you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place there and using this guy in an everyday sense. Um, but, hey, whatever. Uh, let's talk about the final conclusion here. Look, final conclusions, this pen is first and foremost great art. This is a stunning object. It is a spectacular sculpture. It's beautifully made, and, you know, it's it's a thing that I loved seeing on my desk. And frankly, I loved using it just because it is so damn pretty. That is very, very, very nice. Um, and so I, I will miss it in that capacity. Because first and foremost, this pen is beautiful art, and in that role, I think it's it's excellent. And frankly, if you're looking at this as a sculpture that writes, I think the pen... Uh, the price point, the, the about a hundred bucks, depending on the exchange rate, is pretty solid. It's it's nice. The thing is, it's also a pretty decent pen. I mean, the posting issue is absolutely ugly, but it does write fairly nicely. Um, and it takes good cartridges. It works well, particularly as a pen on your desk with a nice pen tray, etc. Um, uh, but the thing is, it's not a great choice for an everyday carry pen, and that's kind of where I tend to specialize. That's where I love pens most. Um, uh, something you just put on your person and have on you all the damn time. Between the lack of a pocket clip, the largest size, the relatively fragile finish, which prevents you from throwing it in your pocket bare, and then the fact that if you put it in the slip, it's even bulkier, and you can still scratch this part up, this is just a bad choice of pen to put in your pocket and bring with you everywhere. Maybe in a briefcase or in a backpack in the slip, I think it could be okay, but this is honestly a pen that kind of wants to have a nice little tray in your desk where you, you know, start writing, you put the clip back in the tray so it doesn't roll away, and then you write for a little while, and you put the clip back on, and then you have beautiful art on your beautiful desk, and you have a beautiful day. But in terms of something you just carry with you and write with, I think this falls a little more on the side of art than practicality there. If you're looking for something that is similarly beautiful, but is a little bit more comfortable on the go, I think you should look at the Lamy 2000. I mean, it's a bit more money, it's resin-based, it's piston-only, and it's still a little bit of a diva when it comes to everyday carry. But when you do that route and you pay the extra money, you do get a much better nib and writing experience in general. You get an actual clip, and you get a cap that's happy to post. They really accommodated that in the Lamy. But the thing is, if you're looking for something for your desk that is just spectacular, that is beautiful, that looks incredible, I think the Namisu is a really, really great choice. And you know what? It still writes pretty good to and so the Namisu Nova is a great piece of art for your desk that happens to double as a fountain pen. And frankly, I think that's pretty neat. So if you're looking for art, I think the Namisu Nova may just be the right call. Get it? Right? Uh, anyways, hope this has been interesting and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of the day and that the novelty of this review hasn't worn. Okay, I'm done now. Bye now.